Have you ever learned an important life lesson from some of your experiences and then realized later on that you'd learned the wrong lesson? That happened to me, and it was a costly mistake. As a student, I always minimized studying. I put off class projects and test preparation until the last possible moment, usually. I knew it wasn't a great strategy, but for me, it worked pretty well. At the end of each semester, my grades were always okay. And over time, the lesson I learned was that in school, I could be successful by dealing with a problem once it became apparent. Unfortunately, that wasn't a strategy that worked well in other areas of my life. On a warm spring day in 2009, my wife and I went out for a walk. That evening on our stroll, I stumbled and almost fell a couple of times. When we got home, I realized I could only lift my left foot about six inches off the ground. The next day at work, my leg seemed fine, but I couldn't hold a pen tightly enough in my hand to sign my name. After a few weeks of tests, I got a disturbing diagnosis from a neurologist. He told me I had multiple sclerosis. I was stunned and scared. MS can have many adverse side effects, but what I was afraid of the most was the loss of two things, my independence and my sense of purpose. I dreaded not being able to do the activities that I viewed as key and core to my responsibilities in my roles as a husband, father, friend, and employee. I reasoned that if I could no longer do those activities, I would be just like the human appendix, physically there, but serving no useful purpose. For more than two decades, I had taken my health for granted. I ate poorly, drank more than I should, and I gained 40 pounds. The only stretching I ever did was when I went to put my luggage in the overhead compartment of an airplane. The only time I lifted weights it was on the rare occasion that I would help a friend or family member move. At work, I was under chronic stress, and I got accustomed to only sleeping four to five hours each night. But none of those factors rose to a level that demanded my attention until I got my MS diagnosis. And by then, it was too late. With time, I began to experience changes in my physical abilities. And that triggered deep thinking about my past and my future. And I realized that there were two forces that were tugging on me. On the one hand, I really enjoyed the highs of current accomplishments, that quick dopamine fix of doing something well in the moment. And hey, you only live once, right? Enjoy it. And yet at the same time, I realized that in many areas of my life, what I deeply wanted was something that would take much longer to create. My wife and I got married on the beach at the historic Hotel Del Coronado here in San Diego. It was an amazing, awesome experience, but it was also just a fleeting moment. And what I deeply wanted was a true 50-year life partnership. Communication, appreciation, respect, those were just a few of the daily traits I would need to bring in order to create the relationship I wanted to have. Holding my two newborn sons in my arms had produced incredible surges of emotions like love and awe <laughs> and not more than a little fear. But what I deeply wanted as a father, what I deeply wanted was to raise sons that were happy and independent and caring. And I knew that in order to do that, I would need to focus on listening and coaching and encouraging for decades. See, to accomplish all the things that I wanted to accomplish in life, I realized would take sustained action over many areas and over many years. But constant problems like my MS diagnosis, were sure to knock me off the path of progress. 
I wondered, isn't there a way I can avoid the pain of these incessant problems? There is, but it takes focus. In 1912, flying was an incredibly dangerous activity. That year, eight of 14 U.S. Army pilots died in crashes. Today, flying is incredibly safe. In 2022, more than 3.7 billion passengers boarded flights globally, and there were only 229 deaths. There are literally thousands of changes that went into improving flight safety. But the common unifying theme of those changes was that it's more important to prevent problems than to solve them after they occur. In aviation terminology, pre-flight checklists are more important than parachutes. Now, I know I can't avoid every problem that might happen because many things are outside of my control. For example, COVID. But I can have a massive positive impact on my future by eliminating or even just reducing the severity of problems that are within my control. Think of it this way. Many people spend 90% of their time focusing on problems they already have and only 10% trying to avoid future problems. How much better would your life be if you were able to spend 80% of your efforts on problem avoidance and only 20% on problem resolution? Now, I know that may seem like common sense, but very frequently, common sense doesn't convert to common practice. So how do we bridge that gap? Well, here's a few suggestions that helped me. Two do's and one don't. Do think long-term in key areas of your life. Have an idea on what you would like to accomplish and anticipate problems that may occur. Are you concerned that you may not be saving enough for a comfortable retirement? Then commit to adding 1% additional each year to your retirement savings. Do focus on making many small incremental changes rather than focusing on some lottery ticket strategy. A small personal example. My wife is not a morning person. A few years ago, I decided that I would make her a fresh cup of coffee every morning, first thing when she comes down. Now, every day I start feeling good knowing I'm doing something for somebody else, and she gets a daily reminder that I appreciate her. And don't, don't succumb to the allure of being a problem-solving hero. Sure, the person who enters a burning building to save a child will get a lot of press and publicity, more so than the person who installs sprinklers. But the sprinkler installer will save far more children and do it with far less drama. Today, I focus on preventing problems, not just solving them. I eat better. I lost those 40 pounds. I wear a sleep tracker. I got a lower stress job. And I walk a lot. In 2015, I struggled to walk 2,015 steps each day. This year, I'm averaging more than 17,000 steps daily. There are many things I cannot do but I am once again excited about my future. And how about for you? How do you get ahead of the game? I recommend the following. Think of one area in your life. Is there a key relationship that's gone stagnant? Has it been a while since you were excited about your career? Is there some aspect of your health that is slipping? Then try to think of one activity that you can start and sustain to help in that area. Find your version of make a fresh cup of coffee every morning. Then, once that habit is repeatable and consistent, find another area and find another activity that you can get started on and repeat again and again and again. Don't wait for a problem to blow up in your face. Take charge. You can create the life you want and live a future where you spend less time solving problems and more time preventing them.